Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on WordPress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month and get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash Know How. Today on Know How, basic streaming part. It's a Twitch show where we build, Ben Break, and Upgrade. I'm Father Robert Palliser. And I'm Jason Howell. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to open up your head with the can opener of knowledge so that we can pour in the soup of, of stuff. <laughs> the soup of, of justice. Knowing. No. That's, no, no. That's, uh, no. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you try to make a metaphor. Yeah, don't Just make don't it do up it. on the fly. Don't, don't do it. Do I, it. Don't do we're, we're much better at talking about potential Oreo cookie flavors because you're running out. I am. Yes, if you've got a suggestion for a potential Oreo flavor that we haven't already tried and all about Android, AAA at twit.tv, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing a different, you, you've actually been faithful to this. You've been doing a different flavor every week. Yeah, ever since Oreo was announced to be the flavor, and I can't remember exactly when that was, sometime at the end of last summer, I think, we yeah. found out that the version of, of Android was called Oreo, and every week we've tasted a new flavor. As you may or may not know, there are a lot of flavors of Oreo. Some a lot of, of which limited should not exist. Edition, yes. Uh, if you go, actually, if you go to twit.to slash Oreo, Patrick De La Hanty here at Twit has been managing a doc that keeps up to date on all the Oreos that we've tasted up until now. So, you know, if you're like curious, you know you want to Oreo, order Oreos and you don't know which flavor to, to try, it's a good reference. You know, the funny thing is, even though some of those flavors have been absolutely disgusting, like the whole slap you across the face and say, what were you thinking? Burke will eat them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. He really will. Well, I think we... I He's think our Mikey. You know, I, I think Burke probably shares our curiosity and will try everything. Uh, he tends to like a lot more than what I like. No, no, I've actually had Burke come up to me with the pack of Oreos from AAA, and he'll be like, man, these are disgusting, Padre. You should try them. I'm like, stop eating them! Stop I didn't it. want to buy dinner, what? <laughs> oh, but folks, we're not here just to talk about Oreos. We, we oh. do have it at the top of the show, because well, okay. we're going to be bringing some Android stuff towards the end, but... We specifically wanted to give them a second part of the basic streaming episode. Now, I did okay. the last one with, with Megan. Mm -hmm. The whole idea was to create a setup, something that would allow you to, to just get into streaming for under $300. And we, we actually brought people some very good, cost-effective equipment. Everything from something like this, if you go back to the wide shot, this was that newer ring light. You know, I, I remember when something like this would have cost us $1,000 easy. Yeah. And now it's $100. And, and it's all it's, packaged into a single kind of unit. It's kind of crazy like that, yeah. yeah. But you combine that with like that Logitech 920 or even a, a small HDMI camera, and you've got a very competent studio setup. I mean, of course, it's not going to be something like this where we've got thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars of lighting equipment with professionals setting it up. But if you were just looking to stream to Twitch or to YouTube Live, that's a great setup, and, and it's very cost-effective so that you don't have to spend a lot of money to jump into it. You can just sort of start and then maybe grow it as as your needs grow. Yeah, that's kind of the, the beauty of where we're at right now with this stuff. Like, cost has come down considerably, both on the video side, you know, on a setup like what you're showing out yeah. there. Also on the audio side, oh, gosh, yes. microphones and quality, uh, you know, th that used to be it used to be that you had to spend a lot mm -hmm. to get a good quality uh, sounding microphone for broadcasting or podcasting or live casting whatever you happen to be doing and a lot of people just weren't aware of what good quality was so everything sounded horrible yeah. and now yep. you can spend a hundred dollars and get a great microphone you can spend a hundred dollars and get a great camera set up with nice lighting that you know is better than the the fluorescent single bar oh. fluorescent that's above you and casting <laughs> a shadow so that your nose looks like it's and everything you know, is green because I like that green look yeah. that that green sick look, you know, it's it's sexy. It's so it's the, it's the beauty of, of the fact that this has all been so democratized yeah. and opened up and yeah, that's what we're I at. mean, that's what it's built on. Uh, what Absolutely. should have been a $10 million studio ended up being a million dollar studio because everything has come down in price. In fact, yep. I just got back from NAB and I did a, a little segment with a group that was broadcasting from the South Hall and um, I actually, I brought my own PR40. 
mm -hmm. uh, just because I, I know I, I love that mic. It works well for me. And the guy's like, dude, we have really nice mics. I'm like, I know, I just like my mic. And so I put it on, and I did my segment, and he comes to me afterwards. He goes, that sounded so good. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He goes, how much is that? I'm like, well, PR40, I mean, if you pay full retail, it's 400 bucks, but you can get them for 300. He goes, we've got, the mics that are on there are like $8,000 $8, $8, $8, a pop. I'm like, well, maybe don't hmm. buy those next time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what microphones they're using. Does it cost $8,000 a pop? Uh, but there's there's got to be a point of diminishing returns. Yeah, yeah. That. It's like, okay, you've got two hertz more frequency response, but... <laughs> right. Is it, is it worth 4000 each? I don't think so. But okay, let's, let's not talk about crazy setups. We want to give you a setup that you could use to, say, broadcast your gaming. We know that this is a big content-producing area right now. Mm -hmm. People like to show off games. They like to show off consoles. They like to show off PC games. We wanted to give you an easy way to set that up using some of the equipment that you already have. You probably already have a desktop if you're a hardcore gamer. You definitely have a laptop. Why not leverage the power of those devices to make your own studio. Now, the last time we did this with, with Megan, we really didn't have a way to get input in. I mean, you could use XSplit Broadcaster to just capture part of the screen, mm -hmm. but here's the problem. First, now you're limited to only what you can play on the same machine that's broadcasting. Not great. That's, right. that's not a good setup. Uh, first of all, because you're using some of the power of your machine to do the broadcasting and the encoding, which means the gaming experience is not going to be nearly as good as you want it to. Yeah, be. none of that is is necessarily pro, uh, processor light. Yeah. No. You know, live live streaming to the internet. There's a lot going on there. You want you want you want as unencumbered a process as possible on the the system yeah. that you're using to live stream because you don't want dropped frames. You don't want lower quality or stuttering or some sort of latency between the audio and the video signal that's hitting the stream. You yeah. and you know you start throwing that onto a machine where there's high intensity graphics, you know, happening with a, with a video game. That's it's going to slow everything down. You're going to run into issues. You point. are, and it's you know it's not just performance. You will find out that when you start loading down a machine like that you get instability. You get machines that crash. And if your gaming machine is also your broadcast machine, it means you're, you're going to have to shut down the stream every single time you crash out. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not good. No. You kind of want to reserve that PC just to do its thing so that you can make sure your stream always continues. Even if your console or your PC dies, you at least still have the camera running. So you can say, hey, wait five minutes while I get this thing booted back up. The other problem, Jason, is if you're going to do it that way, you can only stream a game that you're playing on that PC. You know, what about if you want to show off your Nintendo Switch? Yeah. Or, you know, your PS4 or your Xbox? So we wanted to give you a setup that would allow you to take in a external HDMI input uh, so that you could stream that. And you know, with XSplit, we're going to show you how you can layer it so you can get that look where you can switch between, say, uh, your camera and then the full screen of the, of the console and then maybe put one... Uh, one video here, one video window there, and then stream sort of what we would call an, an ME. Mm -hmm. Are you up for that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to show off some toys because in order to do this, we're going to need some hardware that doesn't currently exist on your PC. Unless you've already got some sort of HDMI capture, uh, you're going to need to get a little something something. Now, I have spent years, literally years, going from product to product to product, and they all had their upsides and their downsides. For a, for a while there, I was into Hopage, and then their stuff kind of got messed up and nasty. Um, Avermedia also makes some, some decent ones, but the, the company that I've been really big on right now has been Elgato. Elgato, hmm. they've got good hardware, and the price is not that high. And, and let's show you this first. The Cam Link. If you go to the link for this one, Alex, this is about as inexpensive as you're going to get. You're going to find it between $110 and $115. This is bare bones basic. It's a USB 3.0 interface. Captures in 1080p, 60 frames a second. That's 40 megabits per second. Requires Windows 10, Mac OS 10.12, uh, or and a, a fourth gen quad core i5 in order to make this work properly. And this is this is what it looks like. It's it's, you know, it's, it's actually super simple. You've got your USB interface on this side. You've got an HDMI interface on that side. What I like about this is not just that it's it's low cost. But that it's also super simple. Yeah. I mean, anyone can run this. Uh, now, that's where you start. If you need something a little bit above that to solve a problem that this has, then I would go with a, a different product called the HD60S. Here's the problem that you're going to run into. Yes, this is more expensive. It's 160 versus 110 to 115. But what this gives you that the Camlink doesn't have, if you go to my overhead, is 
There is a pass. Oh, there, oh, yeah, oh, there we go. There we go. There's a pass through. So on this side, I have an HDMI in, also audio in, and on this side, I have HDMI out. So I can still go to a TV, an external monitor, and um, and uh, you know run my capture. It captures the exact same frame rate. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second, 40 megabits per second. Again, requires Windows 10, Mac OS 10.12, a fourth gen quad, uh, quad core i5. But that pass-through really does make a difference. I mean, if, if this is going to be something you're going to leave in, in line all that time, mm -hmm. this is a really good option. Now, you can do this with a cam link. We've, we've played with the little HDMI splitters. You can buy those on Amazon really inexpensively, like 20 bucks. Basically, HDMI on, in on one and then two HDMI out. And then one would go to the cam link and one would go to the, uh, the monitor you're watching. But what I like about the HD60 is it's all in one package. Yeah, the more that you can bring all of this into a single yeah. piece of hardware, you're probably going to spend more up front. I mean, I, I kind of liken it to back in the day, you know, when I worked at, at CNN and I was helping build out their podcast kind of network and turn it into a video product, we had been playing around a lot with a software called Wirecast, yep. which yep. is, you know, pretty, pretty popular, well-known uh, software in kind of software-based uh, video streaming of multiple inputs and everything like that. But that requires a lot of different pieces and components of hardware to all be connected. You've got to really kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's a game almost of like, well, is this a magical combination that's going to keep it from crashing yeah, or whatever? Yeah. The more you introduce all these components into the mix, yes, it can do it, but how stable is it? Are they going to get along? Is it going to work 100% of the time? Versus like, you know, in the case of Wirecast, you know, something like a TriCaster, yep. which we use here in the studio. It's purpose-built hardware. Turn it on and it's it It's meant to do that thing. So as much as you can bring all that into a single piece of hardware and not have to have all these breakout cables and everything, you know, it's going to work 75% of the time. I, my experience has been absolutely go, you know, spend a little bit more, yep. Yep. go with the purpose-built hardware. I, I'm absolutely with you on that because, I mean, when you think about it, if you're going to get a decent splitter, I mean, you're going to be spending twenty to thirty dollars. So you add that to the cost of this, so it's just one hundred and ten to one hundred and fifteen, and now you're up to you know one thirty-five, maybe one forty mm -hmm. versus one sixty. So for twenty dollars more, it's all built in. Yep. I mean, yes, yes, it's more expensive, but like you said, do you want a bunch of extra breakout cables? Think about to, to your time that's yeah. potentially saved too, right? Like time, time is money. How much time do you want to spend troubleshooting stuff? Yeah, I don't like troubleshooting. I don't. Stuff. I don't. And, and the other thing I like about this is it's also it's USB C. Ah, uh, that's which nice. it, I mean, it depends if, if so. It's device. powered through USB C. It's powered through USB C. Now they do give you a cable. I have it here somewhere. They they give you a cable so that you can go from USB A to USB C. Mm. So you can still use this on a non USB C enabled computer. But I'm at that point where I'm transitioning all my peripherals to USB-C. So the right. more USB-C stuff I have, the happier I tend to be. Yep. Yeah. But uh, they will work exactly the same. In fact, the innards are basically the same between this and the cam link. The only difference is this does have that splitter and the pass-through. And the advantage is also it has the, <clears throat> the audio in. So if, you, if you've got one of those old, old, old devices that's not actually passing audio through on the HDMI. Oh, that's a nice bonus, That's actually. a little bonus, yeah. That's a nice that's little bonus. That's really nice. Yeah. That'll protect you. Now, uh, there is another one that I would suggest, and that is this bad mamma jamma. This is actually the HD60 Pro. As you might have uh, I've seen, this is not an external device. It's not USB-C, or it's not USB-3. It's a PCIe 1 interface. Captures in 1080p 60 frames per second, just like the other, except this does it in 60 megabits per second. So, you know, from 40 for the USB connected devices up to 60, it means you're going to get a slightly better look. Hmm. I mean, that, if, if that's what you're looking for, this is, this is actually better. I actually prefer this. I have the USB devices because sometimes I need to stream when I'm on the go. But I prefer a card that's in a box. Uh, just because a desktop's going to provide me more power, um, I, I find they're at... at a little bit more stable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other nice thing about this, they have a version of this that does 4K. And they also have uh, a encoder. So this has an H.264 encoder on the board. There's actually a dedicated piece of silicon that does the encoding, which means that gets offloaded from the CPU, um, which is nice. Now, the yeah. price on this is it's a little bit higher. It's 180 bucks, But if you do run a desktop, um, I would highly suggest this. Again, they make this use Windows 10. However, I've used all three of these products with OBS. So if you if you want to run the open source broadcaster, mm -hmm. that these these will all work with those just fine. 
it looked like the 4K version was around 390. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so about, you know, a I, I was that. actually going to check that out because it looks cool. But and that there's a crazy amount of power because you need that in order to encode 4K. But yeah. Are any of us streaming in 4K? I don't know. I am streaming in 4K. Future, future proof yourself for double the cost. I, <laughs> I, I you know, Maybe I, I kind of like, I kind of like what I got. In fact, for that yeah. same price, I can buy one of these and then get one, of the, two of the USB ones. So that's true. Uh, let's just go that direction. Now there is one more thing. I really, really like this. Um, I, I think actually, uh, Alex Lindsay was playing around with one of these. This is the Elgato Stream Deck. This is neat. This is and so see, cool. this is my first time seeing it actually powered before it was off, like it wasn't plugged into anything, so all these keys were, were dark like this. Those are some nice little screens on yes, these Yes, they buttons. are. And, and see, look, I can just uh, go back go back to that. So I can just add custom buttons, and they just come on, which is kind of cool. And I can add my own custom pictures. Right. I can add. So if you're going to be a streamer, the nice thing about this is there's nothing, there's nothing that this enables that you couldn't already do with XSplit or with OBS. However, this gives you that sort of out of touch. So mm -hmm. I can actually switch between the, uh, the scenes in, in my broadcaster by pressing that and now see how it changes so I know which yeah. one is active. That's great. That's, that's cool. I mean, this, now we're getting up to sort of like TriCaster functionality here where I have dedicated buttons that will do dedicated things. And so I could say, okay, the top is, are going to be my, my scenes. Yep. All the different things that I've created so that I, I mix cameras and inputs. I can say that the middle ones are going to be my audio effects, and the lower ones are going to be like the, when I have pre-records. Um, and, and everything can be triggered. <laughs> See, there's actually no function on that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but it, the, what I like about this, it is so infinitely... Um, uh, okay. flexible. So yeah. I can actually have folders upon folders of buttons where I can say, okay, now I'm doing Premiere. Yeah. Now I'm doing XSplit. Now I'm doing OBS. And I just click that and all of the menus will change. I've used things that, you know, similar control surfaces that have, you know, that allow you to kind of customize it to your own yeah. choosing. And in my experience, sometimes they they promise a lot. And when I get it, I'm like, yeah. man, I'm going to use this all the time. And then I realize I don't. One of the reasons that that doesn't happen is is the display issue. Yep. Is that it ends up being a bunch of buttons, and I like have to memorize over time what these are. And at some at some point, my brain is just like, you know what, whatever. I'll just stick to what I know, and I'm over it. Having the ability to kind of change the uh, the the readout on these buttons and assign them makes this super usable for, for if you're using this for some sort of like broadcast scenario. Right, and here, awesome. here's how easy it. that is. Like if you could stay on, stay on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click the configuration for that last button, and I'm going to say, okay, this is my JSON cam. Oh. And see, it, it's, it's that easy to label it. So like as I'm setting up my, my, uh, my broadcast, I can go ahead and set all my buttons. I can change the pictures on the button so that I can say, okay. Put a, put a picture of my face there. Put a picture of your face, so, right. <laughs> so like, for example, when Burke does his hunt and peck when he's looking for the right shot, this could be, no, Burke, just look for the picture no, of Jason. No, just look for the, the, my and face. Push, push yeah. Jason's face and you get Jason's face, uh -huh. right? See, See? The, just push this face. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Now, like uh, that. this is a little bit pricey. If you go to the link for that one, Alex, it's $150. Which sounds like a lot, but you get 15 user assignable LCD keys. It's a USB 2.0 interface. Again, it works with Game Capture, OBS, XSplit, uh, TP Stream, Twitch, YouTube, Lives Mixer. It's, it's actually, of all the gear, that's probably the one I'm going to use the most because I'm going to be using it even when I'm not streaming. How is, how is it talking to the software? What is, what is the protocol that's being used? Is, right. it, is it MIDI or no, it's not? No, MIDI. no, it's, so it's its own thing. It, it's, it looks like a keyboard. Oh, so it's, it's basically just an HID with a little extra layer so that you can do bi-directional data. Ah, okay. Right. So uh, this, to the computer, this just looks like a keyboard, but it also adds, because there's an app here, it adds the functionality of being Got able it. to assign what the keys look like. And like you yeah. said, yeah, I've got MIDI keyboards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, now thinking about it, MIDI wouldn't be enough because it's doing a lot of other extra data right. stuff as yeah. well. And, and but, Yeah, and, and I don't want to have to, like, physically label, no, put a sticker please. on a button. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no. this, is, this is easy. In fact, there's profile, so I can say, hey, I'm streaming now, and it switches to all my profile buttons, nice. uh, my, my streaming uh, functions. So you can just like change the entire layout depending on what you're doing, too. Precisely. Yeah, precisely. that's great. Now, when we come back, we're actually going to take all the stuff we just talked about. We're actually going to show you 
how to use it. It's, <gasps> it's kind of fun, Jason. It is. It is. We uh, do it for a living here. We do it. We do it, we do it for a living. So basically, what we're doing is we're showing you how to do what we do, <laughs> but a whole lot cheaper. Yep. Should we be doing that? <laughs> I don't yes. Know. Share I don't all know. the knowledge. All right, we're going to be sharing all the knowledge in just a bit, but first, let's go ahead and take a moment to thank the sponsor of this episode of Know How. Now, folks, I understand that you are people of knowledge. I mean, that's why you're watching this show. And as people of knowledge, you understand that to have a presence in this digital world, it means that you have to have some sort of site, some sort of address, some sort of portfolio that you can draw people to so they can see who you are, what you create. And hey, if you can be a broadcaster, that's not really optional. It's a uh, table stakes, folks. That's why I'm so happy to have WordPress as a sponsor of Know How. Now, if you visited our site at all, then you know that WordPress is the center of our presence. It reflects who we are and what we stand for. Now, I've been using WordPress for, oh my gosh, what? It's, I'm, I'm going on 15 years now, back when I was still living in uh, San Jose. And, and I use it because it gives me the freedom and the flexibility to share my voice, my work, and my way. It's so customizable. It allows me to make my site without having to sweat all the details. I don't have to worry about programming individual templates or individual CSS pages. I just choose what looks good for me, modify it a little bit to give it that little extra Padre flavor, and I'm good to go. In other words, WordPress lets me be more me than I would be without them. Wow, that's just kind of cool when you say it that way. Now, you don't need to do the coding or the design. WordPress provides all the tools that you need to get your site up and running. Their customer support team is there to help 24-7. That's Monday through Friday and weekends too. Now, WordPress offers powerful e-commerce options, ranging from a simple and effective buy button to a complete online store. And what I love about this is you can just get the features that you need. So you can start as just a portfolio. And as you become more popular, as people want your content, as people want the things that you create, you can just add the module to add e-commerce. It's really that simple. The plans start at just $4 a month, and when you're ready to expand your business's online reach, WordPress makes it easy. With built-in SEO, social sharing, because if you, you know, if you don't share it, it doesn't actually exist, and specialized plugins to meet your needs. A 30%, 30%, that's not a typo, 30% of all websites in the world run on WordPress. There's a reason for that. It's because it's awesome, because it works. So here's what we want you to do today. We want you to get started with 15% off any new plan purchase. Just go to wordpress.com slash knowhow. That's wordpress.com slash knowhow to create your website. Again, that's wordpress.com slash knowhow for 15% off your brand new website. wordpress.com slash knowhow. And we thank WordPress for their support of knowhow. All right, Jason, you ready to get this all together? Yeah, I'm ready. So we've got the toys, but the question is, how do you use? Do we have the power? Power! <laughs> I don't know why we did that. I'm sorry. That was a bit of a rock star diva break. It was awesome. Okay. Was now we are starting with, <coughs> excuse me, we're starting with some of the gear that we had from the last episode. Now this is that newer ring light that I uh, I almost blinded Megan with. Yeah. Again, if you go to the link ring for this, do that. hundred dollars, fourteen inch diameter, one hundred and eighty LEDs. 36 watts of power. It's dimmable. It's got a five, about 5,500 Kelvin color temp, so a little bit warmer than daylight. Daylight's, what, 5,400. Uh, two diffuser filters, so I can go with the cool or I can go with sort of a warm look. By the way, the warm look looks really good on Caucasian people, not so much on people of color, just, just throwing that out there. Um, and it's also got a shoe mount and a camera holder. So, for example, I can mount my little Logitech 920 Right here, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I don't need this because we've got studio lights, but I can uh, get super bright. Oh my goodness! Right, no, that is pretty bright. So. Yeah, I. What What amazes me is if well, if I'm, I were I'm like a pulse. YouTuber and this was my setup, it would be really hard for me to see after recording <laughs> because it's so bright. Well, I mean, Jason, you get blinded by the truth, man. <laughs> blinded by the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ring lights have such a distinctive like quality <laughs> well, to the, them. Here's the, here's the funny thing. You know, the, the first time I remember seeing a ring light in a semi-professional production was it was a YouTube video for that. Uh, There's an acapella group that got really, really popular for a while. Um, oh. it was, it's like four remember. of them. Uh, pent Pentatonics. Oh, okay. Pentatonics. And they did this. Um, it was a sort of a Daft Punk medley. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were using ring lights, and you could actually see yes. the ring. It's, and at first, I thought that was weird, but then I, I watched it a couple times. I'm like, 
that's actually kind of a cool effect. Yeah, like, it's a okay. cool effect. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'm go with that. Lot, see it a lot now. Uh, so I'm going with this. I, you don't have to. I just I really like the sort of all-in-one um, flavor of the ring light, especially since it's so easy to carry around. Normally, I carry a three-light setup, and well, that's a pain in the butt. So, Absolutely. Yeah, go with this, and it's inexpensive. You're also going to need a camera, and and again, I'm going to go with this, the low-cost option. If you go ahead and show them the link for this, this is a Logitech C920. What I like about this is unlike the 900, because you'll see the 900 sold as well, the C920 actually does the H.264 encoding inside the camera. Okay. So it's already encoded oh. before it hits the USB bus. A little less bandwidth, also a little less processing for, for your computer, which is kind of cool. You're I feel like that's less expensive than I'm used to seeing. I know, right? Well, no, they used just a year ago, they were still 100. Yeah. Uh, but they're coming down. And you can buy newer cameras, but the thing is, those newer cameras are typically 4K. Mm -hmm. um, Again, not a lot of us are going to be streaming in 4K. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, there's not. Yeah. Do you, are, are you really setting them yeah. that more more information <laughs> yeah. with you're your face in 1080p versus yeah. 4K? You're not setting yourself up for failure by spending fifty dollars and getting the quality that you actually yeah. do get out of the 920. Besides, if you send the 4K stream, I, I know the comments are going to be like, "Look at his pores." <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna have dude to needs a night some, mask. You're gonna, yeah, you're going to have to invest in some HD makeup as well, Folks, which is a thing. This is why Twitch streams at 720. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to look so smart in a couple of years. <coughs> Excuse me about that. Uh, now, you're also going to need an, an audio option. And I, I, again, spend some money on audio. Jason, you're with me on this. Yeah. Which is, you, people will kind of forgive if your video doesn't look perfect. Yeah. But if your audio it sounds crunchy or tinny, I, I can't even listen to it. I have to shut it off because it actually it really bothers me. Although it really is kind of interesting. Um, it, it bothers me because I'm, I'm very attuned to this stuff. It bothers us because we work in a professional studio. I was actually reading an article just last night about podcasts in general and how you know, people are, are commonly, you know, in the industry are, are talking about the importance and stressing the importance mm -hmm. of high quality audio. But as far as listeners are concerned, they're more and more forgiving because really they just want to hear this, this discussion. They want to hear about this topic right. that they can't find anywhere else. I don't know how that, that coincides with the audience that we have because we, we really do try to do, you know, go above and beyond to improve the audio quality. I would say in general though, like something that I learned years ago is you can have the best video in the world, but if you have bad audio coupled to it, people will actually perceive the video yeah. as looking worse. Which is because weird, of right? the audio, it's a, it's like a kind of a brain trick. So just you know, spend the extra fifty dollars, get a nice microphone, and you'll I think you'll be happy that you did. And the people that are watching you will be happy that you did too. Yeah, I, I've seen this a couple of times where you'll see someone's video setup is awesome. They're, they're you know guest of your show. Yeah, and you're like, oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. And then they speak, and it sounds like they're speaking over an iPhone microphone. And you're like, oh, man. <laughs> come on, man! If you're gonna spend the money for the video setup. Yeah. Get a decent mic. Yep. Now, you could go with what we did in the first part of this series. Get yourself a gaming headset. Most of those have really good audio because they're USB. Uh, the one that I really like is the HyperX, the, either the Alpha or the Cloud or the Cloud Revolver. Those are all super comfortable. They're really good for gaming, and the mic's actually pretty decent. However, if you want to go the route that we go here, Alex, if you go show them, uh, yeah, I know, it's 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. But what I like about this is it's a complete set. So it's the Heil PR40, which is the gold standard, folks. Make, make no mistake. That is the best sounding mic you will get for podcasting. And it's front firing or top firing, which I really like because a lot of them are side firing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also the, the uh, isolation mount and the stand. So it's basically everything you need uh, without having to buy a lot of extras. And then also you need a way to get that yeah. into your computer. So that's if important. you go to link for this, this is the, I, I've been using this one for forever. There are newer versions, and that, that's why you're not going to find this for Prime anymore. Uh, but get something like this, the Shure X2U. The new version also also does um, lightning, so you can use it on like an iOS device as well. But that just gives you audio from the XLR source, which is your Heil PR40, into USB, which is what you need for uh, XSplit or OBS or whatever it's going to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's, that's our setup. Now let's show you how we're going to use it. So if you go to my computer here, Alex, this is, uh, right now you're seeing the Stream Deck. So this is where I've set up the, uh, the control surface that I'm using. Let me get rid of all the ones I'm not using. And as you can see, what I really like about this is I've got all of these options. I can add any of these buttons. So from Stream Link, uh, they've got the OBS system in here. They've got the TP Stream. They've got Twitch. 
Uh, and you know, it's not just switching back and forth between cameras. I can also do like chat functions. Um, I can go to streaming titles. I can uh, emote my chat. Basically, any function that you can do on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter, I can assign to a single key. Um, that really does make a difference. And again, because I can change my, my profiles, it means I can switch between streaming on YouTube and streaming on Twitch or streaming to Twitter. Uh, this is, again, one of my favorite pieces of Elgato gear. Um, I get, you know, 150 bucks. I, I believe we had Alex C in the, in the chat room saying, a, a, a control surface is typically going to cost you a thousand dollars, which is what I saw at NAB. For 150, this is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But okay, we're not doing any of that. We're doing X split. So right now, what I've got is the Cam Link is actually active right now. This is the uh, the, the inexpensive one, the 110 dollar version. So I am going in from a Nintendo. Um, what what is this, Alex? A Nintendo. An SNES Classic. An SNES Classic. It's one of these. These little, look, look, so cute. Oh, it's tiny. It's tiny, but it is an HDMI uh, um, output here. So this would work for, with a PS4. This would work with an Xbox. This would work with a Nintendo Switch. Anything that has HDMI output, that's... that's <gasps> yeah, I'm going to give you the okay. power. You can, there you go. See? Oh. All right. What am I playing? Uh, we'll see in just a bit. Now, um, here's, here's the fun part about this. I get to create what are called scenes where I can take any of the inputs that I have and I can turn them into what I'm going to be outputting. So Alex, if you go back to my, my, uh, my computer here, Jason, I'll get back to you in just a bit. Okay. Oh, you really kind of want to get on that, don't you? Yeah. So scene one, so right now what I've got is I've got that camera. This is the, the ring light. In fact, let's, let's Hi. Wait, hold on. Let's blind oh. you. Let's blind you a little bit. Hi. Actually, wow, that looks, that looks really good. Even against the other lights. Huh, a figure. Mm. Huh. I think we've got that one right. All right. Uh, let me uh, turn this back down on those. We're going to blind the cameras. So I can make this any size I want, but of course, I've made it full screen. Now, scene two is just the input from, from the, uh, the Nintendo. And this is, this is how you add sources. So I'm going to go to source. I'm going to go to devices. I'm going to go to video devices. I'm going to put cam link. Now, it's going to start off in the corner here because it thinks I want to make uh, quads, but I'm going to stretch it out to full screen. So now, scene one is that camera. Scene okay. two is the, uh, the, the, uh, the input from the cam link. Now scene three, let's do something different for scene three because one of the shots that you see a lot on Twitch is you see the game and then you see like the, the player yep. overlay, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go to the, my sources again. I'm gonna go to devices, video. I'm gonna take that cam link. I'm gonna make this one full screen. And then I'm also gonna take an input from, from uh, the webcam and oh, I'm going to do, go. let's just like put you up in the corner. Yeah, and okay. just for giggles, I'm going to make a fourth scene. And this is like, uh, let, let's say I had a bunch of different cameras. Uh, or let's say I'm, I've, I've got like a YouTube input mm -hmm. so that I can bring people in. I'm going to go ahead and put in, let's see, the game capture, of the, sorry, the device from the cam link. I'm going to leave that at a quarter screen. And I'm going to go ahead and take another source which is, oh, no, no, oh actually here, <laughs> now we've got two of them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the, the webcam, which is the one I wanted, and I'll put you down there. So j this is kind of actually how we work with the TriCaster. With the TriCaster, we, we layer things. We can, we can do things called MEs, which allow us to composite screens. Now, one of the things, actually, if you go back here, Alex, one of the things that we can do is we can also play with depth. So down here at the, the bottom left-hand corner, I actually have the ability to tell XSplit which screen should be on top. So right now, the Logitech C920 is on top of all of them. I can actually put it below... And so now it's below this one, but above that one. Oh, okay. So we can layer. Yeah. Now, here's, nice the, here's the cool thing. Uh, if you go to the overhead shot, so this is my little stream deck. Uh, this is what I'm going to be pushing in just a second. Now go and go back to the, uh, the output from the laptop. There we go. I can, as I push these buttons, I can just switch screens. So, Very nice. Right? I mean, that's, dude, seriously. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's really nice. And you can, you can go to the software and change the, the type of transition, obviously, between those, right. how long it takes. So right now I've got it, uh, it's defaulting to a 700 millisecond fade. Uh, so fade back and forth, but I could do mm -hmm. wipes, I could do, you know, basically anything I want, which is kind of fun. Yeah. What are you choosing? Well, actually, it's good to two. Here, I'll choose... Uh, I choose you, Pikachu. I'll choose Star Fox. 
Good luck. Uh, <laughs> Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Come on, Star Fox. I almost went with the Star Fox 2 because I've never played that. That's the uh, unreleased game that's included right. on the SNES, but that's probably not a Now, uh, good I, to I'm going to add this little caveat here. Um, this is a pain in the butt, and it's something that XSplit has done. I understand, okay, they have to get a revenue stream, but they've changed to a subscription model. And uh, I can actually, so I could use the, uh, the input on the HD60S, and I can get the audio. Mm -hmm. But if you want digital audio ins from like an HDMI source, you have to pay a uh, monthly fee. Yeah, oh. or or just license it. And oh, like, okay. if I want more than four scenes, because I can do a lot of scenes here. I could do fifteen scenes on that control surface. Okay, that also requires the subscription. So they are kind of starting to nickel and dime. And I'm actually, I'm thinking I'm probably going to take this hardware and I'm going to create OBS because I know a lot of people really like that open source broadcaster. Yep. And that's probably you've it's a pretty. It's pretty versatile. Uh, oh, there we. <laughs> we can do damage. I'm not sure. Alex, are you just taking that from YouTube? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute, this sounds too good to be <laughs> Super Nintendo version. <laughs> now, one of the nice things about this is once it's in XSplit or OBS, because they're all going to work the same way, I can output it as many times as I want. So right now, I have it set up so that it's recording a local copy. So anything that's going through the broadcaster, I can have a, a, a separate copy that I can edit later on. I can also push out multiple streams at the same time as long as I've got the upstream bandwidth. So right now, I have it set up to push out to YouTube, to uh -huh. Twitch, to Twitter, and to Facebook. And if you want to know how to do that, just check out episode, I think it was 292, because we actually show you how to get the key. I don't want to show you mine, because if you have my key, it means you could broadcast as me. You played this Sorry. a lot when you were a kid. No, I, I did you? then. I haven't played it in a long time, and I'm really <laughs> bad right now, because there's, there's a slight bit of latency between what I'm seeing down there in the corner. Right, which is the you other know. reason why you wouldn't want to play it this way. Yeah, you, yeah. You'd want you want that direct output to the monitor. Right, Absolutely. so you would either, uh, you would use this the cam link with the um, uh, the HDMI splitter, or you would use this, which has the HDMI uh, pass through. Yeah. Now, uh, Jason. Yes. Um, Sorry. I, oh, this is stop. kind of fa fascinating. Actually, okay. it's kind of well. Not, it, <laughs> there we go. That's that's the shot we want. There now, I, I should also say that this works with multiple C920 or 900 cameras. So if you oh, wanted okay. to plug yeah. in multiple USB cameras, so I could get like a product shot. Yeah, uh, would the, you be doing that into this USB uh, that you have? Yeah, or? the only reason why I have this is because there's only one USB port on my laptop and it doesn't uh, have power okay. to support everything. Uh, if I've actually, I can run it off of a USB-C hub off my laptop, but then when I plug in this, it's just drawing too much power and everything starts to flicker out. Right. Which is a pain. Right. And kind of nasty, not great. No. So this, is as expensive or as inexpensive as you want it to get. If you if you really just wanted a camera and say one input for your gaming console, uh, because the software is free and because you already have the computer, you could do this whole thing for under two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You could do it for about one hundred and sixty dollars. That's not bad. If you wanted to add in the the uh, uh, you know, a nice ring light and maybe a nice microphone, then you're looking upwards of six hundred dollars. If you wanted to put something into your desktop so you could get some really, really good performance, which again, I would recommend because anytime you're doing this, a desktop's gonna give you way more power than a laptop's going to be, then you're getting upwards of $800. Right. Uh, again, you choose what you need, but what I like about this is you can grow it. Start basic, and all of these pieces you will use even as you get to the more advanced setup. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds good. That sounds good. Now, Jason, yeah. I wanted to give him one last little something something this is what we were talking about oreo cookies at the beginning and that is uh android because megan did apps for ios Android yeah. actually has a few decent apps just for some basic streaming i mean it's not going to give you anything like this no you're not gonna be tying consoles into it but i thought we should probably show the folks at home what they can do i mean i'd be really surprised if if some of this stuff is very different from what megan said because i mean you know just just tuesday on all about android we, we did a uh, roundup of music apps. We were like, what's the state of music apps on Android right now? And what you end up realizing is that Android and iOS, really, there's a lot of parity there, right? It, it, both, both platforms have been developed for years, so the main players exist on both sides. Um, you, you, you mentioned 
well, I, I don't know if we touched very much on this, but YouTube gaming, which I didn't have in, oh, in yes, here yes. until like 15 minutes ago, I, re I realized, wait a minute, YouTube has their own streaming for gaming. Uh, if you install the app called YouTube gaming, I actually have a link in the doc that I just added. I tweeted it out and went live um, w on YouTube gaming because I've got a game that I can play. But, you know, it allows for very easy uh, front-facing uh, camera, little a little dot down at the bottom while I'm streaming out uh, the game that I'm playing. Uh, what am I playing here? This is, uh, st uh, what is it, uh, it, Sky Fox? Oh, Robert? yeah, okay. I can't yeah. Remember. It's, it's one of these, something. don't get hit and shoot everyone. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. But anyway, so it, it's really easy to, to stream this uh, through YouTube live. It's, right now it's connected to my YouTube account. And so, you know, I basically installed the app uh, and... Within seconds, I'm streaming with a front-facing camera, uh, you know, little dot down here that I think you can move around. But this is limited on. to the, their gaming titles. No, no, no. This is this is just going straight up to to YouTube's oh uh, okay. YouTube site through my account. Oh, I can I stream like any any of the games that I have on here. I haven't. Uh, let's see here. Here are some of the controls. I'll go ahead and stop my stream here. There we go, and I think that that'll be archived on my on my site. But um, but yeah, you can you can stream anything you want. Here's the screencast area for YouTube Gaming, and you just go up here, say I want to go. It gives you the options to either go 720p or 480p if you want to kind of save the processor on your phone, uh, and then you can select any of the games that you have installed, and just get, boom. I mean, it's like within a couple of taps, you're streaming your gameplay if yeah. that's something that you want to do. You know, what, what I like about this is it fills in the hole. Uh, now, we both know this because we work with Twit, but you have to release content on a regular basis. If you do not, your audience will just disappear. That's yeah. That's just what's one of those things. So if you are going to start doing this, I mean, yeah, maybe you have your broadcast set up at home, but there's going to be times when you're not there. Mm -hmm. And when you're not there, it's always nice to at least throw something to your audience. Let them know that you're still there, you're still invested, you're still going to be broadcasting. Sure. So, you know, maybe, hey, you went on a vacation. Okay, well, give them 15 minutes of you playing games and doing commentary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, this is one of the, actually, there was a really good panel at NAB for this. Um, with just a bunch of podcasters. And we all talked about our setups, and we all talked about the hardware that we like. We all talked about the services that we like the most. Mm -hmm. But what was actually contentious was how much content do you have to give people? Oh, yeah. It's and, a, you know, and, it's and, a you know, treadmill. There, there was one person there who's like, yeah, <laughs> I, I stream every hour. And I'm like, what? Because, oh, yeah, maybe gosh. only two minutes, three minutes, but I stream every hour. And, and it works for him. He's got a great audience. But I'm thinking, that would kill me. I could, there's no yeah. way I could do that. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's a, it's, that's a hard, hard thing to jump on to because then, then the audience kind of expects that frequency of output. And yeah, it's like, and at some point, don't you have to sleep? I mean, yeah. are you waking up in the middle of the night to play two minutes of gaming? That's yeah. just ridiculous. I mean, we're starting to hear a lot about burnout, too, for a lot of these yeah. people who are who are including content and uploading content and live streaming, you know, every single day. At a certain point, it gets tiring. It may be really fun now, but, you know, pace yourself. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, YouTube gaming, if game streaming is, you know, something that you want to do, that makes it really easy, and, you know, everybody's on YouTube. So, it's a great audience to be able to, to go to. Uh, Twitch, of course, which I don't, I actually do don't it. have a Twitch account, so I can't log into it, but... Um, but I mean that's a that's an obvious standby, and you can you can stream to Twitch uh, through the app, I believe. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. Um, and, and this is why I like XSplit because with XSplit or with OBS, yeah. I can I can hit YouTube and Twitch at the same time, so it's the same stream going. Oh, on and that's really nice. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about this or that or whatever. Catch I, your audience wherever they have. I remember be. when we were still working with uh, with um, live stream. And we were doing like this Frankenstein's monster of, okay, we'll take the stream and we'll yeah. send it to three different boxes, and each box is responsible for a different buffer. That was a pain. So yeah. much nicer now. Yes, yes. Well, speaking of live stream, that is also another option. The thing about live stream, though, uh, is that if you really want to use live stream to stream anything, you're paying for it. Yeah. Live stream is not, yeah. is not a free stream sort of approach. I, I they think the, do I give think, you better service. Yeah, exactly. And you're paying for that service. You're paying for the quality, um, you know, that you get through live stream and the support. But I mean, I think I think it starts at around like forty some odd dollars per month, and that's if you pay annually or thirty some odd dollars, right around there. But um, you go ahead and switch to the overhead. 
Yeah, yeah, if you switch to the overhead, you can see. I mean, it's it's pretty direct, and if I try and go in there, it's going to tell me that I need a subscription. You know, it's, uh, but live stream is a pretty popular platform. You know we talked I mean? about this at the panel, too. It's like, you know, what do you prefer? YouTube and Twitch are free, and you get a certain type of audience. Live stream is not free, but you get arguably a, a higher quality audience? I mean, that's yeah. what they were, I, I didn't buy I mean, that, but well, I, I mean, live stream just say Yeah, from a content perspective of what you find on live stream, it's a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more of the kind of the broadcast network content can be there. Some of the, the major sports teams are, are streaming their content there. It's a little bit elevated of yeah. a level of, of quality and content as far as that's concerned. It's not as... It's not as, you know, I'm a person streaming my video game playing sort of sort of approach. Uh, and then, of course, you, you stream, which has been yes. around for a long time. We, we stream here at Twit on Ustream. And in fact, usually you can find it not very far down on this front. Yeah, there we are. There we, there's Yay! our thumbnail, in fact. There we are on Twit Live on Ustream. Uh, but you can use this to stream as well. You set up an account and you log in and it, it's pretty direct access. I thought I was logged in, but it gives you a pretty, you know, just a couple of couple of hits and you can go live to your yeah. Ustream account. Something I, that done, I used to do that a lot. I, I don't really do that much anymore. You know, uh, talking about comparing services, uh, this is actually brought up by uh, Gin Klops in the chat room. Um, what I find with Twitch is you get the drive-by view much more easily than you do on either Ustream or Livestream or YouTube. So on those other platforms, if people find you, they've probably searched for you. All right. On Twitch, whenever I'm broadcasting, I will get people who know nothing about me. They have no idea who I am. They're just like, oh, okay, well, well this came up. Let me, let me try yeah. that. That's, so again, keep that in the back of your mind. If, if you think you've got sticky content that a drive-by would stay, right. that might be a better platform for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, exposure is pretty important in all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of people doing this. Oh, gosh, yes. Um, so it was, so, I mean, those were kind of the main standouts that I could find on the professional-ish side on this kind of casting either gameplay or if you want to kind of elevate it and, mm -hmm. you know, reach a, a more professional or higher kind of, I don't know, a different different type of it's audience. A, it's than a different just demographic. Random person yeah. going, "Hey, I'm live." There's <laughs> there's the whole personal live streaming right. that you can find on both on both platforms: Periscope, Facebook Live, uh, You Now, which I know very little about, but I installed it yesterday because I was, was playing. What was that one? Wait, uh, uh, I realized Meerkat. I was far too old to be using that app, so wait, I uninstalled wait, it. Remember Meerkat when that came Meerkat, out? And we were yeah. like, "Wait, what is going on? I don't care about you walking down a yeah. sidewalk." Oh man. Yeah, some of this, some of it's weird. Like, like you now, I installed it and watched a couple of streams, and it's basically just someone st sitting there going, "Hey, thank you for the likes. Oh, hey, so and so, you give me five hundred <laughs> likes. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for the like. Literally, it's the stream is them thanking <laughs> people for the likes. But anyways, that could be your thing. I realize yeah. I'm not the target audience for you now. I'm okay with that. <laughs> and and okay, I, I'm, we don't want to belittle any of these audiences because obviously they have attraction. Yeah, but you kind of have to find one that works for you. Well, yeah, and I mean, that's that's just to say that there's a <laughs> lot of different ways that you can do live streaming on Android, on iOS or whatever, but what is the ag exact type of live streaming you really want to do? There are platforms that service different types of live streaming. Yeah. And, you know, if, if it's gaming, you know, Twitch, YouTube gaming, the, like, those are probably the ones that you want to check out. And thankfully, they've made it really easy to do so. They did. Now, we you also have the dark side. What? Uh, well, Facebook Live, yeah. yeah. Totally. I kind of put that into the personal category too, but you know, I don't have Facebook installed on my phone, so I can't show that off. Yeah, uh, I actually um, don't have Facebook installed on anything. Uh, <laughs> at this point, Facebook for me has become, it's just a, a credential keeper. Like yeah. I've got some accounts that use my Facebook account, which is the only reason why I haven't just shut it down completely. But people have been complaining. I, uh, I messaged you on Facebook six months ago. You never got to me. I'm like, yeah, I won't. Yeah, I know. You know what I did as far as the whole credential thing? I went in there and opened up the page and was like, wow, all these different <laughs> places. And I, yeah. I did what I sometimes, I basically did, uh, did bankruptcy as far as that's concerned. I just highlighted them all and said, you know what? If I need I'll deal with the consequences. Exactly. If I need them again, I'll redo it. But otherwise, yeah. I, I, yeah. actually, I did that in Twitter. Uh, the other day, and I, my, I had no idea I had authorized oh, that I many that apps to have too. access to the account. Yeah, yeah, 
Mm, uh, well, that's a really good point. Beatmaster is pointing out that Skype is doing some new features, and I completely forgot about this. This yeah. was this was very recent news. Um, they're they're like doing last it, week. They're doing it because they realize Hangouts is taking a big chunk of their audience. Because sure. Hangouts, people actually asked, "What if you want to have guests?" Hangouts is actually a really good way to do that, and it works really well with um, with uh, XSplit. Uh, you can actually use that as an input sure, and switch back and forth. A lot of people are yeah. doing their shows live on Hangouts. I don't know if you can do the multi-person Hangout stream from your phone. No, probably no. Uh, uh, you, I don't think you'd want maybe to. Maybe you could call into, but I, I think it... I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have to be running kind of the initial source yeah, from you do. a computer yeah. in order to do that. But yeah, the, and Skype, by the way, obviously we use Skype here for, for remote guests. So it's very interesting that they're kind of going further into this podcast and live stream direction well, with multiple hosts because, yeah, because it, I mean, that's how we've been using them for years and years. And not when I say we, I just mean the greater kind of podcast video community yeah. has been asking. Well, that's how we use them. Well, folks, I know that this has been a lot of information, and we want to make it easier for you to find it. If you want to find links to any of the products that we've talked about or to XSplit, or just see a step-by-step -step instruction on how you would actually broadcast to YouTube or Twitch or any of those services that require a key, what you need to do is you need to go to our show notes. Jason, where I forget, where are our show notes? Twit.tv slash KH yeah, no, for no. Kano How. If you want to Kano How, you go to Kano... How? Yeah. Uh, there you can find all of our back episodes as well as the show notes, so you can find the links. More importantly, you can find the subscribe menu. Folks, this is the best way to support the show. If you like Know How, if you like what we do, if you like following us around, if you like the fact that we screw around for an hour a week, just go there and get an audio version, a video version, or a high-definition video version delivered automatically into your device of choice. And also, it's a great way to share it with your friends if you think they might like what we do, like if they want to get into streaming. Also, don't forget that you can find us on the socials. Now, we actually have a big presence, don't laugh, on Google+, and that is on purpose. We did it because, like we were talking about with the discussion on which streaming provider you use, we wanted a specific type of audience. Uh, we didn't like spam accounts, so we moderated. And we also wanted to make sure that people were there because they actually wanted to talk about the show. Yeah. They wanted to talk about the project, uh, projects. Just go to Google+, look for know-how. There's a very short approval process, and once you're in, you get access to almost 12,000 KEDAs. Those are our know-it-alls. Show us pictures of your projects. Ask questions. Answer questions. Again, it's all part of the experiment that is TWIT. Of course, that's not the only place to find us on the socials. Jason, where do they find you? At Jason Howell on Twitter. That's that's really where you go. I'm yeah. there. Yeah. And you're going to find me, twitter.com slash Padre SJ. Uh, if you follow me there, you can find out what I'm doing, even when I'm not in the studio, where, which I'm doing a lot recently, because I think I've slept in my bed a total of <laughs> 12 times the last three three months. It's um, uh, You're yeah. a little busy these days. Well, the problem is I get sick every time I get on like a... 14 hour flight. Uh, and guess what? I'm doing one miserable. on Sunday. So Yay. Yeah. Lucky you. Oh. And then lucky us. I know, because I come back <laughs> and I share it. Cause you know, I, that's what you do. Actually, yeah. I've been good about that. When I'm sick, yeah, I don't no. come in. you you have been good about Unlike it. Unlike some other people, Hase. <sighs> yeah. Just kidding. Oh, and by just the way. Just kidding, I didn't know that. Now I'm scared. <clears throat> Hold on, let me just wipe some stuff on your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've also got a third member of our crew. We call him Sunshine. You can find Sunshine oh. at twitter.com slash A-N-E-L-F. Excuse me, Padre. It's pronounced Alex. Oh, but it's so much better as Sunshine. Put him in the darkness. <laughs> they sound almost the same to me, Sunshine and Alex. Sun Maybe I need Sunshine. that ring light. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, actually. ta -da. Oh, Oh, folks, thank you very much for watching. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Jason Owl. And now that you know how... Go broadcast yourself doing it.